brother from another mother, my young brother, the real deal. I know his last name ain't McCoy, but he's still the real deal. It ain't Holyfield, but he is the real deal. So we're going to stand for our feet. We're going to receive the gift that he is. Amen. Apostle Dan, please come with us, brother. Well, you can be seated in heavenly places. Thank you, sir. You don't have to praise the Lord. You get to. Praise has nothing to do with the feelings or what you drug in here. Mm -hmm. The problem all too often is those things dictate how we praise. And then we leave feeling empty. And we blame the preacher. He must not have studied enough. Well, let me remind you of something. The Bible said Judah plows. Right. Judah was the tribe that represented praise. So the word also said that praise breaks up our fallow ground. That's that stuff you and I are made of. <laughs> so whatever you came in here with from work, from family, from friends, from the news broadcast or whatever that hardens some stuff. This is the reason because we really can't find the order of service in Scripture the way we've adopted it. And I'm not saying that's bad, but I think there's a reason we should praise and worship first. Matter of fact, well, let me rephrase that. If, if I was pastor, I'd say let's praise at the beginning of service. Let's bring the word and let's worship at the end. Yeah, come on. Because that's, that's where the intimacy happens. But here's the deal. If praise breaks up the ground, then what praise is doing is preparing your heart for the incorruptible seed I'm about to put in your womb. Mm. But watch this. So if you don't praise and prepare the condition of your soil, the Bible said it falls on stony places. And then we get offended because the sister beside us walks out free and we walk out the same. So next time y'all come in corporate praise, remember what this white boy said? And you lift your hand. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what your mom and them said about you. You didn't get the promotion. They like Come in here and prepare your soil so what he labored to produce, you'll get pregnant with. Glory be to God. And when I wear this, when I, I just got back from preaching at the First Nations people on two different reservations in Canada, and God has opened up the Cree Nation to me, for, and they're eating up the kingdom message. So hungry. I just left a gymnasium in Mini Stikwan where the, where the chief of the reservation blessed me to come in and gave me the high school gymnasium to preach and told the people to come hear what God wants to say. Wow. I mean, we had meetings. I mean, there's such a hunger. You know, when you go places that are really hungry and then you come back to the States <laughs> and they think they've heard it all and seen it all and know it all. Sometimes, I, listen, I've heard something in four, I can't believe I'm about to say this. I just turned 62 when I was preaching in Canada two weeks ago. I look good for 62 years old. <laughs> now, it's a number. It's a number. But numbers don't lie. I mean, there's, every now and then I put my feet over on the side of the bed in the morning because it take me a little bit longer to get up out of that bed than it did to get in that bed. <laughs> Kennard Jr., the baby. Mm -hmm. See, Dr. Never. Yeah. I heard this in my spirit. I heard this in my spirit during worship. 
Whose report are we going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. And first of all, let me help you. He wasn't a mistake or an accident. That's how we discern everything. How many of you know God knew him before he existed in mama's womb? Reread Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed you, I knew you. So God has a plan and a purpose for his life before he ever came through the canal. Well, the enemy doesn't like it when people have kingdom purpose. So they try to put things on people, especially babies. And I don't know what kind of reports are getting ready to come, but listen to me. They're a lie. And I'm going to believe the report of the Lord that by his stripes that little baby's not going to be healed. He was healed, and he's going to walk in his purpose, and he's going to fulfill his destiny on this earth. I tell you, I love y'all. I could go preach in Jordans in a hoodie. <laughs> and y'all don't get offended because I've got a suit on and some alligator shoes. I'm just as anointed as this and wearing all that other man. Come on, man. All right. I heard the Lord say this today when I was in my hotel room. Had my worship music on. And sometimes I forget I got one of them little Sony wireless speakers. And I like music loud. Yeah. And sometimes I forget them in the hotel. Until <laughs> I get a knock on the wall. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, I was in the third heaven. Forgive me. <laughs> but I heard this about my friend in this house. And I don't know if you've ever been told this. You may have. But at times and seasons in our life, we need confirmation and reminders especially when we're going through stuff that God has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is what I heard about Rehoboth International Ministries. From the beginning of God's plan and purpose, this was always to be an apostolic hub where ministry was going to come to and flow in and flow out of this ministry. And here's the problem in this city. You have a lot of religious mindsets that don't understand. They don't have a problem reading stories in the Bible about what God did. They have a problem understanding what God is doing. See, the Logos is powerful all by itself, but when it becomes a revealed living word, that's where that dimension moves that you're not in at any other time. And there were ministries that were supposed to be a part of this that have walked away. Wow. And here's why. You intimidated them. Wow. And this is the word I heard in my spirit. Because of the weight, the kebab mm. that you carry from your delivery of your word. Wow. Amen. Amen. Sir. Amen. But then I heard this. He said, tell him and them. This is what I saw in my hotel room in my spirit today. I saw those that left and talked about wow. that were supposed to be a part. Mm -hmm. But when I was praying in the spirit and had my worship music going, I saw people like this. They'd been afar off, but they're doing this. You know why? There's a sound. I, I, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You can clean this up, Sunday. There's a sound coming out of here that ain't just coming out of every place. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there are people that are hungry for more than a warmed up message from last year with a name change because people, the preacher, don't spend time in his presence. The times I get to hear him and her, I always enjoy it because it's a fresh word, man. I take notes. I, mean, I take notes down and I preach some of them. I don't ever give him credit. You know, you know giving him any credit. I was in my hotel room and the Lord showed me. This is a hub. And repentance is coming. And restoration is coming. And prodigal sons and daughters are coming home. Now here's how you're going to find out how mature you are. Some of them that are coming home are the ones that are the very ones that talked about you when they left. 
but they're going to come in a different heart and a different spirit, just like Luke 15. When the boy came to himself and knew he messed up, he came home. The father didn't throw him in the corner and put him through six months of counseling and you say, you dummy, what the... No. He loved him and treated him as though he had never left. I dare you when they start coming back to bake a cake and blow up some balloons and get a welcome back man. Well, you ready for the word? I said, are you ready for the word? Yes. Yes. Open your Bibles to, uh, man, I got notes written on paper, stuff I could find at the hotel. I want to talk to you this night for a few moments on the subjects of understanding seasons and their purpose. Understanding seasons and their purpose. Now, let me get this lie out of the way right off the bat. Seasons are not punishment from God. I want you to say that with me. Say, my season, my season is, not is not God, God punishing, me. punishing me. It's God, it's God preparing, me preparing me for something better. Something better. Yes. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Galatians 6. I bought this thing, and they call it a smartwatch. <laughs> but I ain't that smart. Because it beeps, and, and sometimes I don't know why it's beeping. And it'll beep all crazy. It just beeped. I don't know what it means. I don't know if my wife's trying to contact me. Or someone's on Facebook. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to look at a couple verses kind of quick, and then I'm going to exhort you prophetically of what I really feel strong in my heart for this church. Matter of fact, what I'm going to say, much of what I'm going to say is going to be to the church corporately, but also I'm going to speak to several of you individually of where you're at right now. Galatians 